I am down in my basement. I'm getting ready to do a photo shoot and I thought I would kind of take you through a little bit of my process because I know that for a lot of people, um, getting a good reference image is something that can be hard. It's honestly something that can kind of make or break your painting a little bit. So I kind of thought I would just kind of, I would take you through how I do things and hopefully it'll, it'll be helpful, hopefully, helpful, hopefully it'll be helpful to you. This will be kind of a multi-part thing. As I'm going through this shoot, I'm just going to kind of um, put some of my thoughts and stuff out there in, in video form. For right now, I'm just going to kind of show you uh, the equipment that I use and why I use that. And hopefully that that can that can be of, of some help. I'm using a Canon 70D. I don't think they make these anymore, but it was actually, it's actually a really great camera. I like it a lot. Um, the lens on it is a fixed focus, like a prime lens, uh, 50 millimeter, um, 1.4. Uh, so it can get really, really blurry in the backgrounds, but it's also nice and quick. This is, or with a crop sensor, camera you add i think it's like 30 percent to the millimeter like like to the focal length of the lens so with a 50 millimeter on a crop sensor you're getting closer to about an 80 uh 70 to 80 millimeter lens equivalency so this is actually going to give you very close to what the human eye is seeing at. That's going to be a big factor in getting me a good reference image that looks more like the object or the person is actually standing in front of me. And you can see that I've got it on a nice sturdy ball head mount. So this is going to give me all of the different angles and stuff that I could possibly need on nice sturdy tripod. The big factor here is the lens. Uh, this isn't like the most expensive lens in the world. I think it was like three, 300, 350, something like that. It's a great lens, really sturdy. It's not, it's, it's a nice metal housing. It's not plastic. For lights, I'm using just really just basic Amazon uh, light box kits. I think this one's actually a newer, but Again, really not expensive, but I swapped out all of the light bulbs in these to these LED kind of party bulb things. So they'll give me a mixture of warm light and cool light, but they'll also do all sorts of different colors. Like you can see on on this one, I'm getting a nice blue light, and all of it is controlled via Bluetooth on my phone. So I don't have to switch out gels. I don't have to switch out bulbs or anything. Um, I can just get on the app on my phone, and I can change. It's like a full RGB color wheel, and I can get it to do all sorts of different things. I, it's dimmable. It's You can change colors. Uh, you can do all sorts of stuff with it. They're a little expensive. These ones, I think, were like 30 bucks or something like that per bulb. When I'm actually shooting, I have my camera tethered. So that's meaning that whenever I take a photograph, it's going through this USB, this micro, U like mini USB uh, down and over to my camera or to my computer uh, and it's going to be running through Canon's proprietary software. You can get on their website and they will have this available for free and it will allow you to shoot entirely operating from your computer. So there's this nice little setup that looks exactly like uh, what you would have in in camera and it's really really great because i can push the shutter from here so i can shoot remotely i can set up 
timers on it so that I'm completely away from the camera and it's going to uh, allow me to like not get any any bumps or anything as I'm trying to shoot but here you can kind of see the settings that I'm working on too uh, I haven't changed the f-stop from the last time I used it with a different lens uh, but I'm mostly using the 50 millimeter and with the 50 millimeter it is sharpest right around 1.8 to 2 um, so I'll kind of go back and forth on their shooting at ISO 400 in raw and daylight uh, and I'm using the aperture priority which is meaning that I get to set the aperture and then it'll choose a uh, shutter speed that is going to be appropriate for that aperture setting. So all I have to do is set this number and then it will do the rest for me, uh, which is great because I can get some interesting settings where, you know, I might need to run the aperture uh, a little smaller and get a longer shutter speed. But since I'm working in a studio setting, I don't have to really worry about blur or anything because I'm always shooting on a tripod. Apparently last thing I was doing too, I was shooting, compensating down a, sh a full stop. But then you can also see uh, down here, I have basically taken down the detail set and the picture style at neutral so that I'm getting, so that the camera isn't changing any of the color grading based on what it thinks it needs to compensate for. So it's not going to boost any contrast, it's not going to adjust any saturation or anything. This is going to give me basically the, you know, mind the pun, of rawest image possible. Uh, so then I can take it into an editing software like Lightroom um, and adjust all of the color settings and all of that kind of stuff and get it to be most like what I actually saw in front of me while I was shooting. Uh, oh, one more thing. I occasionally use this little light. It's made by Aperture. I don't remember exactly what it's called. They've got newer versions out. I don't remember how many newer versions, but they've got newer versions of this out. It's a lot more expensive than it used to be because it does more. Mostly because, like, if you look, it has space for filters to go in. So I have a warming filter on it. It has a built-in diffuser and it's basically just a little LED panel. Uh, it's dimmable. The new ones have the color built in so you don't need these separate little filters but this is just all magnetic and it snaps on and off and that's what holds the filter in place. And then I've got it uh, attached to this little tension arm and it's a great little tool for just hiding hiding a little light behind something it's dimmable and it's got a it's all usb charged so if you uh, run out of battery on it you can just hook up um you know one of those portable battery packs to it and run it off of that but that's that's what i use that's um that's really the most of what I use on a regular basis. Um, you can see on the lights, I, I just took some old Amazon boxes and used those as barn doors with some gaff tape. Um, I'm pretty low tech for the most part. It's just about getting lights where I want them, getting so that I'm not bleeding around. Like if you look behind me, I've got moving blankets up, around so that I'm blocking light out from uh, the basement windows. And so it's all about just controlling my light and controlling what is actually going into the camera, how the camera is going to react, um, whether or not it's going, you know, I've got it set to be as neutral as possible. So then I can adjust all the color myself. Um, and then the, the nice thing about running tethered is that it's going to give me the ability to see the image on a larger screen the instant that I take the photo.
I can't tell you how many times it has just absolutely saved shoots of like if I have a model in and I'm, you know, I'm trying to get the whole shoot done in like an hour because I'm paying by the hour and I want to get, you know, my money's worth out of this. To be able to see things close up and see that, oh, that's out of focus and it just needs shifted ever so slightly rather than going through the entire shoot thinking that you had these really great shots and like you just couldn't see that the focus was a little too far forward. Um, or too far back and, and things were starting to go out of focus just because you're on that tiny little screen or looking through the tiny little viewfinder. It's, it's so helpful to be able to see it on a nice big screen, to be able to just take a shot, look at it, really analyze what's going on, and then move forward with, with any changes that you want to do. That's it for part one. Check back in later. Uh, I will move on to the next phase of shooting.